Hi, well, we're here in uh, Woking at the HG Wells Hall. Um, we're here for a very special occasion. It's our annual general meeting, AGM, for Harsham Welfare Hospital, um, a charity that's been set up since 1999. We've been going strong since. Even though it's a very small charity uh, in, in amongst all the big boys out there, uh, but slowly and steadily and surely we've built a hospital, we've served thousands of people um, over the, uh, you know, since the inception uh, of the hospital and we're doing really well and we're here to uh, raise awareness and raise funds of course uh, to help this um, hospital appeal. On behalf of uh, HWH, um, I'm delighted to see that we have a full house. Uh, this is our 11th AGM um, and I'd like to welcome all of uh, our guests tonight. Um, uh, chief guest and eminent doctors, uh, welcome to the 11th AGM. So the um, hospital is uh, based between um, uh, Islamabad and Lahore um, uh, in a place called Karia. Uh, a number of you live there and uh, are here, so you know exactly where it is. Um, it was uh, started literally uh, in a field. Um, we are very, very grateful for um, Idris's family for actually donating the land. Um, the land was transferred into a proper charitable trust based in Pakistan, registered with trustees. So um, moving it out of the, uh, if you like, the family ownership into the charity's ownership because obviously um, it's important that it's kept as a separate entity. Our experience really in terms of being involved in charity has been that people want to give charity. It's, it's in uh, human nature. It's in, our, it's in us to want to help other people who are less fortunate than us. So really we're held back by, I suppose, a lack of faith, a lack of trust. And I hope that after 11 years and after hearing at the end of the evening what we've been able to achieve um, and the success of the hospital, um, that you'll feel that we have earned some trust and some faith from you to be able to support the hospital going forward. Thank you very much. And there's the figures we spoke about briefly. 50%, 69, 73 last year. You know, we're not forcing it to go towards 100% because we know, even if it does go 100%, one thing you must realize that the rates being charged are very nominal. They're not the private rates any patient would pay in a private sector hospital, nowhere near it. These are simply costs we're trying to recover so we can help more people. You saw the figures earlier, we helped, alhamdulillah, over these years, 365,000 people that were treated at the hospital. So that's a year on increase every year. And we can only do this if we have plans uh, in place. And any money that we are sort of accumulating in a surplus, you know, don't forget we are looking at long term and phase two, possibly uh, rebuilding some of the structure there replacing some of the depleted machinery. These things are inevitable. They have to be in a forecast in advance. Now, it's very encouraging that only this year, like, I mean, only in 2013, we haven't got the figures for 2014, but last year, uh, a total number of 44,887 patients were seen. The eye department saw approximately 9,000 patients. Maternity saw 8,000. Uh, gen surgery, 1,092. And ENT, approximately 500 patients. So a total of uh, 64,586 patients were seen by the Hashim Welfare Hospital, which is remarkable uh, because this is started as a very small hospital in the middle of a small village, Karia, in Jhelum. Uh, so this is a very remarkable and a very encouraging figure. My association with the Hashim welfare is about four to five years, but I have association with the chairman, Adri Sawan, for the last 30 years, and it's not the only reason why I support Hashim Welfare Hospital. And I belong to the same part of the um, hospital where it belongs to Hashim Weir Hospital. And uh, the main reason for my support for being involved in this charity is the quality care 
and the work and the service which Hashim Fair Welfare Hospital does for the people living in Pind Pin Hashim and all the villages around it. Thank you. to look at this picture, this picture of our annual general meeting 2002, which was held in St. Peter's Hospital. And can you identify any woman over there? I'll say no, up till that time, this charity was just men's only charity. There were no women coming into our charity meetings, or our annual meeting, whether, whether they were at my home, my friend's home, or in South Hall, in a restaurant, or in St. Peter's Hospital, there were hard, not a single woman over there. But look at the hall today. More than 50% of the hall is full with the ladies. And our chief guest today is our respected lady, Mrs. Shafi, Shahida Shafi. And I would like to mention three crucial charity workers. Of, and there are also the other women. First one, she, Mrs. Frida Sharif. She is the first lady who was out of walking area and coming far away from Reading and used to come on all our meetings. <laughs> and now, even you can see she's not on her own. There are about 30, more than 30 people sitting here from Reading. Thank you very much for coming. And it has not only the senior ladies, but I say young ladies also have been involved in our charity. I'd like to mention one more young lady who is, don't have any official position in the charity, but does most of the charitable work, most of my, organizes my meetings, does my bookings, and proofreads all our annual reports, reports and corrects my hundreds of my uh, mistakes. And that's my daughter, Sana Awan. And, and now I'm going to mention one of the very important young lady for me, for me and for the charity today. This lady, young lady, used to work in Al Baraka Accountants Limited. They, are, they do our charity accounts. And she used to work there. And at the moment, she is fully independent, qualified chartered account, accountant by herself. And she has done this year, uh, last year's accounts. And her name is Sobia Iqbal. And she's from Slough. And ladies and gentlemen, the important thing is she has promised to continue doing our accounts and free of charge. I will. Like. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, now I'm coming out to the clinical bit. But this is my favorite bit, being a doctor, because I love showing you the figures and clinical facts. And as my colleagues already mentioned, the total number of the patients which we have treated 2013, there were more than 65,000 patients. As we are performing very, very well over there, treating our patients, and I will, probably you will ask me, who are the people behind? I think there are two kind of people behind this charity. Number one, their staff on the ground. And number two, you are the people sitting in this evening. You are supporting, and that's everything is happening. But first, I would like to mention the staff. We have about 50 people working over there, 
there are about 29 non-medical people, 20 medical and uh, uh, paramedical and nursing staff, there are about 10 medical staff, out of those 10, three are full-time medical officers, and there are three part-time consultants who are, most of them are our colleagues, and working in a very senior position and very good, reputable hospital in Pakistan. They come regularly, do clinic session, and go, do theater, theater session over there. And I will tell you, my, uh, tell my colleagues who have come first time, Dr. Raza, Dr. Tariq Zaman, and who have come first time. And can you imagine how much we are paying, paying them, whole 50 people? Have you just mentioned earlier, my colleague, we sent only 50,000 pounds last year, just 50,000 pounds, but which is much, much less than a salary of a consultant, and we are running a hospital successfully. And who are the other people I mentioned? You are the main people who are supporting, and that's because of you, all the staff is working, and all the patients are getting uh, treatment over there. Thank you very much. And you can look at there. There are about 300 people over at the moment, sitting in this evening. And we have annually about 200 people who donate us regularly. And out of those 200 people, about 86 people, they pay us, they donate us by regular standing order. And monthly about 3,000 pounds we are getting by regular standing order. And those standing orders really are the key, key part of our, our charity and they are stabilizing factor in our in charity. And you can see the breakdown. There are 13 people who pay by 100 to 300 pounds. And there are 34 people who pay from 20 pounds to 50 pounds. And there are 39 people who pay by uh, 3 pounds or 15, up to 15 pounds. And how much we are sending regularly to Pakistan? On average, about 4,000 pounds we are sending every month. And that's the way our the finances are. And then is the big debate, what to do with the money? and how to spend. We have very small money, it's not a big money, because, but we are doing the big job. Whether do maintenance first, or, or extend the hospital, make it a bigger, bigger hospital. It's a big debate, we have been going on for a few years. Whenever I visit, my friend visit in the hospital, we see the patient, we see the doctors over there, we see the people over there, and we see the hospital building also. And we see the hospital equipment also. And we see the furniture also, I think. For 10 years, patient work has increased more than five times now. And in 10 years, all the furniture is getting wear off. All the equipment Dr. Ajaz is using is 10 years old. We need to replace that equipment. And because there are more patients, we need more equipment there. Whatever we do, whether we do maintenance or extension, we need money. And I say the standing order is the key and stability factor, that's what we appreciate. Because when there was men only, at that time there were no standing order coming to us. But when the, all the ladies or sisters came to the charity, and they encouraged their husband, their brother, their, their, their children, and now we are getting the standing order. And just first time I'm giving you one breakdown now, how much your money is worth over there. As everybody knows, one pound is equal to about 160 rupees there. And anybody who's paying 10 pounds per month, this means 120 pounds per year, if you multiply by 160, it's more than 19,000 rupees. But when, as Muzaffar Ali told us, about 75% of money is coming from there, to only 25%. This means your one pound becomes equal to four pounds. So this means Anybody who is donating by standing order 10 pounds per month annually, he is helping the Hashim Welfare Hospital more than 70,000 rupees, please. That's the great news. And anybody who is paying by 20 pounds, he is helping the charity, helping the hospital more than 150,000. 1,50,000 rupees, or beneficial effect of the patient or hospital. 
और जो लोग पे कर रहे हैं फिफ्टी पाउंड पर मंथ दे आर हेल्पिंग द हॉस्पिटल द पेशेंट एक साल में कितना तीन लाख तीन लाख थ्री हंड्रेड एंड एट्टी एट पाउंड रुपीज से ज्यादा जिसमें नियरली फोर हंड्रेड थाउजेंड पाउंड नियरली चार लाख से ज्यादा अगर ऐसा ऐसा अफेक्ट है नो वन नो अदर चैरिटी प्रॉबेबली विल गिव यू दिस अफेक्ट बिकॉज यू आर स्टेबलाइजिंग फैक्टर यू आर गिविंग अस स्टैंडिंग ऑर्डर एंड दैट्स वेर द चैरिटी कल्चर इज गोइंग एंड मोर लेडीज आर कमिंग मोर स्टैंडिंग ऑर्डर कमिंग एंड वी विल परफॉर्म वट एवर वी आर एम फॉर एंड वट एवर यू होप फॉर I won't take your much time now only few more minutes because I like to thank the people who made this evening uh, annual event happen to, uh, today there are all, all 30 sponsored who have sponsored our event today and 11 sponsored who have uh, our raffle gift Re later on all the kids and ladies and men they will get few gifts and I have also like to thank Talat and Neeta for hosting this event and presenting very nicely abdul i know you had a tough time and even though and your report was a bit late on the table but in it was on the table and your powerpoint presentation i like it is very good uh, i like the uh, new design i will get your opinion also and you can give your opinion please and i would like to thank <laughs> you also for giving us very like sound sound and lighting for this evening i like to thank arif qureshi our zahir saab who is our tester friend and he's provided all this pre dinner fruits and pre dinner drinks that's zahir ahmed mainly and also noman sahi i would like to thank you and very soon you'll be having very nice dinner by abad catering and abad i would like to thank them also and definitely i am going to thank mani liaqat because i want to avoid him this time <laughs> because mani you were very big success last time and and everybody has asked for you so that's why but please avoid me this time <laughs> and i would like to thank jimmy thank you, thank you very much for coming and i think very good tester you have given hopefully the people will enjoy you and and but i can't finish thanking without thanking all the donors all the ladies sitting over there and everybody sitting and coming and making effort to make this even successful last but not the least my family who has been with uh, with me for all the time and the ladies sitting over here and my kids are there also <laughs> finally thank you very much and god bless you
Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and the babies as well. I'm honored to be invited as a chief guest of this charity at Hashim Welfare Hospital. 14 years ago, I attended a wedding in Woking <coughs> with my late husband. As we were leaving the wedding, my husband told me that he has invited someone to come over tea for, to our home for afternoon tea. This was the first time I had the privilege to meet Dr. Avan and his family. Little that I know that this would not be the last encounter with Dr. Ivan, and over the coming years, I would, be get, I would get to know him and his wife over many more cups of teas. It was, it was at that first time encounter, Dr. Ivan and my husband about his, <coughs> Dr. Ivan told my husband about his vision to set up the hospital, providing free medical treatment in Pakistan people who could, be, who could not afford to pay for such treatment. My husband was always enthusiastic about the offering his assistant to help those in need. And of course, being a kidney dialysis patient himself, my husband could not turn down the chance to give, to give his support to this worthwhile cause. My husband provided advice and considerable crucial assistance in helping Dr. Awan to get the organization up and going. Being an, uh, being an accountant, my husband's primary support centered around establishing the, the accounting system for the organization. He managed to do all this in his limited spare time because my husband was a dialysis patient himself and an active member of other local community organi organization. To the day, the same accounting system is in place, standing, in, standing the test of time. I remember seeing Dr. Iwan in a local halal butcher asking me to donate my zakat funds towards, the charity, towards his charity. Until that point, I had very limited personal involvement in the charity. Since my husband passed away, I have become a regular donor to the charity and have kept up to the date with the progress of his work. As far as charity is concerned, in chapter 3, in chapter 3, verse 92 of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you cannot attain righteousness until you give the charity from the possessions of love, presence of love. Whatever you give to charity, God is fully aware therefore. And I say, when you give a charity, you're not only getting one blessing, it's that at least three blessings you're getting. First of all, by giving, money to such people, to such cause, and you cleanliness of your money. Helping the needy and, and getting their lives changed. Reward on the day of judgment and the part to the paradise. And Alama Iqbal is known to have said, dard dil ke waaste paida kiya insaan ko, varna taat ke liye kuch, karna, kuch kam nathe karo biya. They started with humble beginning, made up the handful of the individual willing to devote their time and energy to see his project get off ground and make a positive difference. With limited resources, 14 years ago, their meetings would be held in the back rooms of their own premises and sometimes over the dinner at the famous curry houses in South Hall. Outsiders were, criti were criti critical of these brave individuals setting up setting up this organization, coming on, coming on how it would fail after a short period of time. Now, looking around today, at this AGM held after 11 years, at this AGM held in this prestigious HG Well Suite, it is a testimony to how far these gentlemen have come, for, come along with their vision and they have achieved with the Hashim Welfare Hospital appeal. And even though we are sitting here in these lovely surroundings, I suspect they would be willing to trade places with their old selves and be sitting down right now in, the, in South Hall discussing their plans over traditional Pakistani curry. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Mashallah, thank you.
Rukeria, and I've been associated with Hashim Welfare Hospital for a while now. Um, I attended this evening because it was a charity event. It gave us all a chance to get together and uh, see uh, what progress has been made in the hospital uh, with the charity uh, that uh, we all contribute to. Uh, and we're very pleased to see that the hospital has accomplished uh, a very uh, high target. Uh, and has served a lot of patients in Pakistan. Walking, put your hands together for everybody here, please. Tania! That's good. This was your first accident. Now, everybody, please make some noise! <laughs> Otherwise, in our language, run you know? So, uh, in English culture, a man marries a woman. Our culture, man marries a cousin. <laughs> it's very simple. That's why 25% of the Asian women are being treated by mental, uh, you know, illness, which is scary because 75 are just walking around. <laughs> Untreated. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been married? Uh, for about 20 years. With this one, yeah? Because <laughs> <laughs> you have to think and you have to kick. You have to think she had to kick. <laughs> Very simple. So you've been married to her for 20 years? 20 years, yeah, the anniversary was last week. Very well. Oh! Mashallah. We say with the grace of Allah. So, so you're still surviving. Uh, very much surviving, yeah. So, when a man is not married, he's like a horse. <laughs> when he gets married, he's like a... We say, Kota. Kota ni ingrezi ki hundi hai. Ji? They don't know. <laughs> yeah? Kota bhi. You know Kota? Kota <laughs> and donkey. I did not say that. Good job, you have chemistry. She's messed up your biology, but at least you've got chemistry going on. So, how did everything happen? Because our culture, we don't know. Friday after prayers, I'll be going calling her sister. Next day, I'll be getting married to her. <laughs> Very simple. It's not confusing. How do you propose the Englishman? Well, we met uh, working in a in a pub. And so you were quite ton when you said please marry me. <laughs> and then we went to a uh, U2 concert, and uh, that was the beginning of the relationship, really. Oh, really? Because you paid for the bloody ticket. <laughs> Women cannot afford 
not much, obviously. You, you look beautiful in your prime of uh, So, what did, what did he say? If, if I may, can I talk to your wife? Because in our culture, if you talk to wife, Deri man, Deri Deri Mahadi, he starts. I have to ask you. Hiya, what's your name? Valerie. 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 I know. There's a song about you as well, isn't it? So, Valerie, why would you do this to yourself? <laughs> Just out of curiosity. <laughs> oh. Everybody say, oh. What a stupid thing women have created. Oh. <laughs> women can have a full conversation with oh. So man will come home, darling, I had a lovely day. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, darling, it was beautiful. I met so many people. Oh. <laughs> darling, I left my purse there so you cannot go shopping. <laughs> Not even change it. Sorry, I'll. We should have arranged some subtitles here, but I'm sorry. So what did he say? <laughs> well, obviously, his <laughs> loss of hair started. Because <laughs> before marriage, every man has hair like me. And ta-da! After marriage, hair loss. All of a sudden, the side effects of nuclear power. <laughs> yes, tell me please, how did he propose to you? Uh, it was just uh, over dinner um, in, a, in a small restaurant in Milton Keynes. So, would you demonstrate for us if you don't mind? What do you think, guys? Bishop, please. Talia, for this gentleman. And Talia, for me, please. What's your name again? My name is Tim. 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 Come on, Tim. Everybody, silent. This is, this is the big moment building up now. <laughs> We've had a couple of glasses of wine and we're on the dessert course now. Woo! Apparently this won't come as a great surprise, but would you be my wife? Oh, yes. Tim, in Punjabi you say Jabbi. Jabbi means hug. Thank you so much Tim, you're a gentleman. Thank you. Thank you. What you've added this evening is fantastic. Thank you very much, Apex TV, for covering our the, for covering our event this evening. It was a wonderful evening. About 300 people attended this evening, and everybody enjoyed it. They enjoyed our presentation. They loved uh, the way uh, my colleagues presented their clinical data, and also they they are loving the entertainment over there and there were more than 300 people and they, most of them they would like to come back again and I'm very happy the way the function is going the way the people have attended and where the where people have attended with their families even they got their kids along with them and I'm very happy and very proud of my colleagues my doctor colleagues, my businessman colleagues in, uh, in their wives, their children who have come attended Hashim Welfare Hospital annual general meeting uh, uh, May two, uh, 2014 and I would like to thank all of them. Thank you very much. Very good event, good for charity. Um, they're doing a lot for the you know, local community, helping poor. It's nice, inspiring. You know, been glad, glad to be part of it. Yeah, my name is Amjad Mahmood. Um, regarding the today's program, um, it's been, I think, uh, ninth or tenth year we've been attending this, and I believe it's one of the best programs um, in working. It gives an opportunity for all of us to be together every year and share our thoughts and uh, how supportive this program is in Pakistan. And it shows the unity in the community, how we support our uh, families and friends back home in Pakistan. Um, I think it's very, very important for the community as well as for society in general. That's all. I think um, we should do more of these events every year. Thank you. And this evening has been absolutely amazing, inspiring, magical, and of course entertaining. From the music to the comedians to, of course, um, as presenters. And of course, the absolutely. presenters. Hey. <laughs> it's been an absolutely amazing evening. Such an honor to be a part of such an amazing appeal. Okay, so stay tuned for next year because 
no doubt our AGMs will continue. Of course. And of course, we need your help uh, as always. So, you know, don't forget to our smaller charities out there because we do need your help. Of course. And uh, like Dalit said, uh, be as generous as you can and as lovely as you can and get involved with the appeal. Thank you. Thank you.